In the great era of time we call the late 1970s, two landmarking events occurred. Brett McLaughlin and Link Neal were born. Brett emerged from his mother's womb, his body weighing six pounds, five ounces, and his gargantuan noggin weighing seven pounds, eight ounces, for a total combined weight of 13 pounds and 13 ounces. Brett came into this world, his body weighing six pounds, three ounces, and his unbelievably huge noggin weighing eight pounds, four ounces, for a total combined weight of 14 pounds and 12 ounces. Little did they know at this young age that one day they would come to be known as the greatest blooming idiots to have ever walked the face of this green, blue, brown, with hues of yellow, earth. They would be known as gutless wonders. I can't hear you too well. Hold on a second. Alright, go ahead. Hey man, I got something bad to show you. Bad in a bad way or bad in a good bad way? The good bad. When you coming? As soon as I figure out why I'm seeing yellow. Hold on.
rain on your face? Uh, I think I slept on my face last night. Honey, what is this amazing thing? I discovered it last night and you won't believe it. Tucker can dress himself. Your dog can dress himself? Sure enough, come on, I'll show you. Yeah, Tucker responds to ancient Indo-German commands. Rock, rom, rouse! It usually takes a minute or so. He has trouble tying shoelaces. Okay. Well, come on, Rhett. Don't you want to see? Holy ginger beans with hot sauce? The dog can dress himself! I'm not an idiot, but I would like some juju beans. You gotta call that news guy. What's his name? Uh, Ronald McDonald? News guy, not french fry, you idiot. <laughs> it's Thelman Thalman, numbskulls. Yeah, Thelman Thalman. Alright, yeah, I'll go call him right now. And uh, you just stay out here and knit a sweater. No sweat, do you piss? I've got a great story for you guys. Well, my dog, Tucker, can dress himself. Yes, Mr. Thalmond, he can. Okay. Mr. Thalmond himself told me to come visit him in the morning. If I'm going to be on TV, I think I'm going to need a haircut. Yeah, man, you need one. But you have to ride your bike, because my mom needs me at me playing cactus. You're going to be on TV! Hey guys! Hey! Nice to see ya! Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah. Hmm. Which barber should I go to? I'm looking for a nice, clean, short, or conservative trim. Who would be best? Melvin Cooley. Tall, but short. He's a veteran, been put to the barbering grinder, but remains sharp. And of course, he's always itching to cut off every last hair from your scalp. He is a conversationalist, and has many a joke, many bad jokes. Elton Lancer, robust, but agile. He takes his precious time, but then again, I do have precious hair. His words are few, but, well he really doesn't say much. I don't really like the way his belly presses against my elbow when he's doing my sideburns. Nobody's perfect. Rudolph Blanchard. He built this place of his own too. Racist. When it comes to skill, he's number one. There's no taking chances for this guy. But the fact still stands. Every time he raises his right arm, I get a strong whiff of that underarm body odor. Hmm. Which barber should I go to? I guess I'll go with Cooley this time. He reminds me so much of that girl I had a crush in the first grade. Barbara Walters. <sighs> yes, you made the right choice. What? Come no. on! You like it? I love it! Yeah. Thanks, man. It's alright, anytime. Oh, yes. yeah. Alright, see you later. See you later.
Fred, 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 wake up, Fred. Hello, Fred. I am your magical Pakistani dream genie. I can predict your future. You gonna hurt me? No, I'm going to predict your future. All right, go ahead then. Okay. You will eat tomorrow and sleep tomorrow night. Your breath will smell very bad in the morning. Sometime during the day, the telephone will ring. Your mother will answer it, but it will not be for you. Okay, okay. I, I need to be moving on. Okay, bye-bye, Rahit. And remember, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It's my house. Now, what are you doing in my house? Your house? No can do, Kimosabi. This is my love shack. Get your heavy tail out of this love shack! Whoa, peace man. Make love, not war. Make love to this! Sorry bro, here comes some Taekwondo. Ready poo, ready poo, where are you? Aunt Vildalia. Hey, Ready Poo, give me some of that good old sugar. Pucker up! Can I help you? Come on, Pat Ivo. What you call me? You cussing me out? Get, get out! Get out! Go! Bonjour. What? Bonjour, salut. Comment allez-vous? I'm appalled at your language. I'll teach you to talk to me like that. Oh, hello, Link. How are you doing? Je suis content. Et tu? Oh, excuse me, but I would prefer if you do not curse at me. Non, non, je parle français. I warned you, now I must kill you. <gasps> Just remember, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Link, what are you doing here? René, je ne parle pas pa anglais. What did you just call me? Non, je parle français. What, boy? No. You better watch your mouth before I teach you a lesson. No, no, Steve, the boy. All right, Tucker, put on the sweater you made. Today is our big day. No sweat! <laughs> Wiener. She's that dog. Yeah. He's a commercial chef. Yeah. And what should do?
Unbeatable. Hey boys, what do you need? Professor Mack, my dog was stolen. Oh no, tell me the details. It all started like this. That's how I ended up vomiting on President Clinton. Hmm. Very interesting. Hey! I've just been working on something, Jake. May just help you out. It's my newest invention. The unumbilicalized smoke emission tubule. You must be careful, though. It's not been fully tested yet. Well, what does it do? It's a name-oriented seeking device. How does it work? Once fired, it's capable of reaching the speeds of Mach 3. Now that's fast. That's fast. It will make impact with anyone having the name... Billy Ray... Billy Ron... And Smitted. Billy Ray, Billy Ron. Or Smitty. Why those three names? Once again, stupidity raises its ugly head. Don't you realize I am the master of scientific intricacies? Yes, Professor Mack. Seems like I can already smell Tugger because he's so close to coming home. No, son. Brett just forgot to put on his deodorant this morning. He is the master of all scientific intricacies. Thanks, Professor Mack. I don't know what we would do without you. Well, I hope you'll use the bathroom without me. See you later. Here you go, Han. Now be a good lad and eat your chicken leg. Thanks, Rob. Mom, what part of chicken leg is this? I don't usually worry about that. I just eat the chicken. Well, is it the lower part? Is it the upper part? I gotta go right and ask him. Hello? Oh. <laughs>
Hello? Oh, hey, Rhett. I was eating chicken and was wondering something. Well, that's amazing. I was eating spaghetti. Well, anyway, what part of the chicken do you eat? Um, well, the whole thing. Unless I, too, unless I eat too many nachos before supper. No, 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 no. I mean the actual chicken. What part do you eat? Um, well, it, it can't be the low part, because that's the orange wiry bit. You can't eat that. That's true. But what part do you eat when you're eating the thigh? That's the upper part, right? I understand your point. Well, if you can't eat the lower part, or calf, and you can't eat the thigh, then which part do you eat? Maybe the chicken has three digited legs. We'll have to discuss it on weekly discussion in the morning. Welcome to the show. Today we will discuss a very hot topic. The chicken leg. Now which part do you eat? The bottom or the top? I certainly don't know. Nor does Nicholas here. No, I don't rightly have the slightest idea. So, to help you see this, we have a diagram of the chicken leg. Here it is. Now which part do you eat? This part or this part? Obviously, we have no answer. So we had some of the greatest scientists of our time send in the arguments on videotape. Now we would display the depths. Roll the depths. The chicken leg is a common household item, but many people do not still know what it is. You see, a chicken is a strange and mysterious creature. What is chicken? And what are its legs? The real answer? The chicken leg cannot be perceived by the human mind. Now, we've been talking about chicken legs, and I, I have some right here, and just the, the, the chicken leg. See, this part is it's kind of big and kind of bulbous, and and then this part is it's down down here, and the wiry and the bone and the but but this part is. It's so big and bulbous and meaty and you know, it just smells so good. You eat this part. Oh. Like that. What's the part that you eat? I'm so, I'm sorry. I I can't handle it anymore. Chicken legs are very beneficial um, for your health. If you eat the big part in the uh, morning, it will make you feel really great inside. Uh, and chicken uh, legs are just going to uh, heal uh, the world uh, one day. We can have world uh, healing and the world will be a uh, wonderful uh, place and we won't have any more medicine because chicken legs will rule the world! I honestly cannot understand all the fusses about this leg! It is not the big part or the little part that you eat. It's the orange part. You see this chicken right here. The orange part <laughs> is the part that you eat. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Now, you see, chickens are the ultimate war weapon. You just load them up and send them flying over a city. And then let them rain all loose and they'll just bam. White stuff everywhere when they drop eggs. They'll be down to salmonella in the morning. enhances the capabilities of untested seeking devices. This looks like a great place to test Professor Max's unbuildable whatever tool. And now for the chicken leg. I thought you were bringing it. I thought you were bringing it. Okay. We got the chicken leg inside the rocket? Yep. Three, two, one. 
Where is it going? Well, obviously, to someone named Billy Ron, Billy Ray, or Smitty. A rocket doesn't explode when it makes contact with people, does it? Uh oh. Poor Billy Ron. He was my favorite hockey player. No, he wasn't. That was Billy Ray, and he was a bowling player. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that in the smoldering crater? I don't think this tape was named Billy Ray. Listen to this, Rhett. Dear whoever, I was watching TV yesterday and I came across my favorite show, which I always record onto its own private video. After I watched it, some dude named Jason announced that they were taking the show off the air and replacing it with some show involving a Chia Abraham Lincoln. That sounds familiar. I don't know why, but I've decided to bury every video of my collection in a different spot in the hopes that they will become valuable and someone will dig them up and watch them. Happy watching from Smitty on the date yesterday. He buried this yesterday? Of course, the chicken leg must have attracted the device to this because Smitty buried it. I should tape a chicken leg to my next science project and see if it works. You're going to make a science project of a volcano that erupts a chicken leg? Apparently. Well, since Smitty left this for us to watch, I guess we should watch it.
Are you coming or what? I'll catch up to you. Thanks for the help, Ray. Yeah, no problem. This must be it! Those woods look like the ones from the wildlife video! And there's a truck in the driveway! So now that we're here, what do we do? Well, let's ring the doorbell and ask for Tucker back. Maybe they'll be nice. I doubt it, but it's worth a shot. That didn't work. I noticed. Hmm. Maybe if we were in bald caps, he'll talk to us. Good idea, but I don't have any bald caps. Hold on. Well, let's try them on. No, don't hurt me! Uh, we weren't going to. We come in peace. Oh wow, you guys look so tough and manly there. Probably the baldness. Uh, okay. Well, what do you guys want anyway? Are you selling something? Um, yes! We're selling, uh... Knives and egg slicers! And insurance! But we're not doing so well. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, and I, I don't know what we're gonna do. You know, I heard that looking at pictures of baby animals make people more productive. Really? Well, you know guys, I have some baby animal pictures in my house, so if you come in and look at them, then maybe you'll do better. Here, I found a bunch of baby animal pictures. You can just go ahead and sit down on this couch, and you'll be super smart after looking through these. Oh, I love kitties! Or any kind of pet, really. Do you have any pets? Um, well, we have a dog. He's definitely ours. I mean, we have a birth certificate and everything. Oh, okay. Where is he? I didn't see a dog outside. He's, uh, showering. It, I, I mean, my friend is showering him. Can we see him? I love petting strangers' dogs! Uh, yeah. Uh, let me go get him. And my friend. What are we gonna do? Maybe we can trick them into giving Tucker back. How? You guys are selling knives, egg slicers, and insurance. Well, we could use an egg slicer with that help. What would help is this? Whoa! Oh, that, that would, would really, really help. help! As you can see, your company is doing badly, but it can be improved so that it is more efficient than any other company today. Well, that dog is so good, he can run the company all by himself. I sure could. But he is our dog. But these poor guys could use all the help they can get. You know what? You guys need egg slices, right? And we can use that amazing dog to help us run our company. Why don't we do like a, you know, a swap? Yeah, the dog will be happy being able to use his business skills. Y you would be happy with your egg slicers, and we'd be happy because we got the dog. Well, actually, we kind of want to keep the... D and with a special new offer, you'll get a knife absolutely free. Wow, an entire knife? Uh. That's a lot. But we don't really need a knife. But it's free, and we could use a knife. Hmm, I guess we could use a knife. It's a very fair trade. Deal. We'll just take this dog here, and you'll get your egg slicers and absolutely free knife in the mail within three weeks. Three weeks? That's a long time to wait for an egg slicer. 
Oh, that's because they're imported from... Uh, Italy! They're that fancy. Well, I hope your company does well. Make sure you take care of that dog, shower and feed him and all. I can't believe they traded us Tucker just for some egg slicers. Well, we got Tucker back. Let's go home now. Agreed. You know what? Someone should make a movie about us. Yeah, and we'd have fans and everything. More like a ten minute morning talk show. <laughs> day of first grade, we were both held in from recess, cause we were both writing profanity on our desk. Call it in space junk, space waste, space stuff, we make it safe for shuttles to fly. Across the land, or my Facebook account was deleted by the man. I carry around a picture of my face and a summary of me written out on a page. Facebook. Facebook. I'm hooked on Facebook. Some So if you got a kid who's writing obscene graffiti, give him a picture of a mythic beast and he will cease to write.